Gentlelady yields back. Now recognize the gentlelady from California, Ms. Barragan. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. I, um, I want to remind um, the public, because a, a, there was a, a comment made that there had been no hearings on COVID, um, but we did have a hearing in June of 2020 um, on the response to the COVID-19 disaster. And a lot of that, as I remember, was a disaster under the prior administration um, of the response, the lack of response, the lack of acknowledging the seriousness. And I remember even claims about you can uh, inject bleach to, uh, to deal with it. I mean, the misinformation and the disinformation is a huge concern because clearly we know it has public health impacts. Um, and it's really unfortunate when science is not taken seriously and when the misinformation and the disinformation continues. I want to thank you for the work that you do uh, day in and day out. I know that your primary concern is of Americans and making sure that we um, are doing all we can to fight infectious diseases and non-infectious diseases. Um, uh, Dr. Walensky, I want to thank you for your willingness to not just do the work, but to go across this country and travel into communities to meet constituents, to meet public health officials. Um, thank you for coming to my own district in Watts um, last year um, to talk about the importance of awareness and vaccines, um, something that uh, I believe saved millions and millions of lives um, and that nobody uh, really should have dieted the numbers that we saw happen. Um, so let me uh, start, uh, Dr. Walensky, with you, with a non-COVID question, really. Heart disease, diabetes, cancer, and Alzheimer's are some of the most common causes of illness, disability, and death affecting a growing number of Americans. Many chronic diseases disproportionately impact people of color, people in low-income neighborhoods, and others whose life conditions place them at increased risk for poor health, especially during infectious disease outbreaks. Um, can you talk a little bit about and discuss what the CDC is doing in this space and the important role the CDC plays in addressing non-infectious diseases? Yeah, thank you so much for that. I, I think it's critically important to recognize our role in non-infectious, in our infectious diseases for sure, and in non-infectious diseases as well. So as you know, heart disease, mental health, opioids, uh, diabetes, cancer, in the prevention and and um, and outreach for all of those uh, non-infectious diseases. What I think is, is lost is in the conversation and also critically important is the intersection of the two. So um, those people who have the most severe outcomes from COVID-19 and continue to are those who have those chronic medical conditions. It is because we have a partnership in cardiovascular disease, we have that work ongoing, that we can have subject matter experts in both of those coming together when we have a public health threat like COVID-19. Similarly with Zika, devastating infectious disease for pregnant moms, maternal mortality, um, anencephaly in children. It is because during the Zika outbreak that we had our infectious um, experts in infectious disease working alongside our birth defects experts that we could uh, rally a response so quickly. And then maybe the third very vivid example that I will give is in the opioid challenges that we're having now, over 100,000 deaths per year. But we have also those who have suffered from non-fatal um, overdoses related to injection drug use. The coincidence of opioid use and HIV and hepatitis C and endocarditis, where I've spent much of my career, is really why it is so critical that we in public health are addressing both of those together. Thank Great. you. Great. Thank you. Dr. Tabeck, I want to get quickly get you in, trial diversity is essential to develop effective and safe vaccines for all populations, but this is not always the case in the development of new vaccine treatment. While developing multiple COVID-19 vaccine candidates in record time, the NIH did include a diverse pool of trial participants. Dr. Tebeck, how was the NIH able to achieve this and why is it important as we think about future pandemic preparedness? We, we were able to do this first by encouraging the, the vaccine manufacturers to ensure that they included a diverse population. But we also had to gain the trust of the individuals, particularly from marginalized communities. And we did that by taking advantage of equities within those communities, trusted persons, pastors, uh, pharmacists, and so forth within the community um, who, would, who would allow us to uh, share information about 
COVID, uh, information about vaccines and therapeutics, and, it, and of course, the reason why it's important for all people to participate in clinical research. Great. Thank you so much. My time has expired. I yield back.